Hey, what's up, folks? Thank you for joining me. I hope you are ready to get some notes taken, okay? Because I know you guys, there's like tons of you guys who need to see this video. And so if you're coming across this video, I need you to pause what you're doing right now, put hashtag live if you're catching this hashtag live, put hashtag replay if you're catching this on a replay so I know you are catching my videos and I can tag you and invite you later. Um, but basically today we're going to be talking about how to become a great closer. Uh, those of you who know me, who know, um, that I've been doing online business for a little over a year now. Um, I just want to quickly go over my story, how I've been able to build this, uh, small empire and how I'm looking to help other people and to really help you figure out how to become a good closer. Cause a lot of you guys, um, are good at getting leads or getting people that are interested in your business but you're having trouble closing the deal. So I want to help you close that deal. So stay tuned, tag people in this video who you, who you know cannot close the deal for their life. I mean, there's people, you know, from day one, you know, I've, you know, I've helped so many people uh, by doing so many different things. One of which was uh, we used to do live demonstrations every single day of our, uh, of our product. And I used to actually, what I used to do is, is to actually close sales for my uh, downline uh, and their downlines. And it was very successful. We grew a huge team, uh, but yet so many people were fabricated that they were totally um, shocked as to how I was able to close consistently. So if you're having trouble closing deals consistently, I'm talking every single day, you get on the phone with somebody, you're sharing some information, you're providing some value, you're, list, you're, 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 uh, you're doing your due, and you're closing deals. If there's anybody that's like that, that can close deals every single day, and I'm not talking, don't be, um, you know, don't fudge, you know, be honest. If you can close deals, let me know right now, I can close deals, because you're going to help me help everybody else get exactly what they need to know in order to become a great closer. Now, if you don't know what a closer is, a closer is basically somebody who is good at making sure that the customer signs on the dotted line and actually makes payment for service or product. Um, now, this is not a difficult thing to do. However, some people make it seem like it's the hugest thing. Now, there, it does require some skill, though, and I'm going to talk about what that skill is uh, real briefly in this video, and I hope you guys catch on. Now, if this is, again, your first time coming across my videos, do hit a like, do, um, you know, let me know that you're here by putting hashtag replay, and then I can add you on videos to come. So I'm going to be going over some amazing, like really just eight steps on things that you should be thinking about. And I'm going to be going into detail each step so that you can really get the ball rolling. So the number one thing that you're going to want to do before you could even think about becoming a great closer is believing in yourself. Okay, because here's the deal. Um, right now, i got a few people watching this video. And you probably come across this video and, you know, you might have ideas or thoughts as to what I'm saying. But none of that actually matters. What matters is that I believe in myself. And so um, one of the benefits that I had um, early on in my affiliate business was that I had someone by the name of Rory who was very supportive, encouraging, motivating. And every day he would motivate me and I'd wake up to wanting um, to do better for myself. And so I, I had a desire to believe in myself, but I had the support. So believing in yourself is the first step, but also surrounding yourself, okay, with people that believe in you as well is also a part of that whole believing in yourself. So that's what I recommend. Step two, love your product and your service. I'm gonna tell you guys right now that so many people, and I can't tell you how many, because I come across them all the freaking time. People just join opportunities and they don't even care about it. They don't care about the industry. They don't care about anything. It's like, what are you doing? Why are you promoting something that you don't even care about, you don't even love? 
And that brings me to this second point, all right? And I'm sticking here for a little bit, all right? If you are not emphatically amazed by your product or your service, if you are not spending umpteen hours, if you are not, if you cannot lose your voice talking about your product, your service, your business, what you do, you're not in love. And so if you're not in love, it's going to be very hard for you to succeed because the obstacles that are, come, that are going to come your way uh, are going to hinder you from moving forward. You're going to be hurt every time you hear no. When I hear no, I don't hear no, I hear not now. Because my product is so amazing, my service is so great, whether you come on board now uh, or later, you're going to come on board. So that is a different mindset. The third thing I wanna touch base is love people and love helping people, okay? I hear this all the time on the phones, I hear this on lives, I hear this in demonstrations, I hear this on webinars, I hear it everywhere, okay? Um, people are so quick to tell you about their product. You know, I get people in my inbox every day asking me, hey, Les, what do you do? Well, Les does a lot of things, so what do you mean, what do I do? Are you responding to a specific post? Are you responding to um, a, a need that you have? Is there something that I can do for you? It's not about me. Leslie has a lot of businesses. Leslie can generate income. I don't care about people knowing about what I've done or who I know or how much money I've generated. None of that actually matters. What matters is what do people need? What do your customers need? Where are they stuck and how can you help them? If you love your customers, it's going to shine and shine bright. And they're gonna hear it in your voice over the phone and they're gonna be excited to do business with you. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna lose them, they're gonna, you're gonna feel, you're gonna be really self-centered and they're gonna see that and they're gonna be like, look, this person's self-centered, they're more focused about what they think they can do for me as opposed to you know, hearing what my issues and concerns are. Which brings me to the fourth uh, tip here, you need to be an excellent listener. And again, I hear this all the time. I hear people on calls and uh, the customer will say, hey, I was looking for blank, blank, and blank. And I'll hear the person, you know, the, the, the person afterwards say something completely contrary to what the customer said. I mean, this is baffling to me. The customers always let you know what their wants and needs are. It is your job to listen. So you need to become an excellent listener. That means spend an amazing amount of time um, just really digging deep into that particular customer. Melissa, I absolutely love you for all the love. Definitely share this video, guys. We are halfway through, and I'm going to dig into uh, the number five. You want to make sure that when you're speaking to your client or your customer that you're hitting key pain points. So for example, listening to them is going to tell you what their needs are. But hitting key pain points that they might not necessarily know they have is going to bring everything full circle. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you have your pitch actually written down. You want to make sure that you know exactly what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, and when. You want to make sure that you're also very consistent. OK, so every conversation should be similar, even though they're not the same. You should be making sure that you're saying similar things that are drawing the, the, the positive results. So, for example, if you've closed a sale um, or close a deal and, you know, you use this particular technique, you, you use the certain phrases, you set it up a certain way and it worked, you're going to want to, you know, recreate that in your next meeting. Uh, while also paying very close attention to any changes in your client or your customer. So not work for another, but the ideas are all going to be relatively the same. So you want to make sure that you don't, um, that you're paying attention to the person that you're on the call with. Let's get to it. Number six. Yeah. Number six, offer a solution. Now, you know, this is easy for most people. Most people have no problem offering a solution. Somebody says, hey, I have a problem. Oh, I have a solution. 
right? But they want to jump to that on the front end. They don't believe in themselves. They don't love the product or service that they're offering. They don't love the person that they're asking or that they're talking to. They're not even listening to the person just because the person says, oh, you know, you know, I'm, I'm this, I'm here. That doesn't mean that your offer is a good one. So your offer needs to be so fine tuned that you thought of it before the conversation. And so what people don't understand is sales actually happen before you speak to the person. And how does that happen? It happens with you being prepared. Your preparedness, preparedness is going to give you the opportunity to be ready for some of the rejection, some of the questions that your client's going to have. The way you answer questions is what's going to determine whether or not they want to do business with you. If you um, are afraid to offer a solution to your client, if you are afraid to ask the right questions, you're going to fail. You're going to struggle. So one of the things that you want to focus on doing is write down all the questions potential customers could potentially have and make sure you answer those questions in your presentation or on the phone. Okay. You also want to make sure that you're asking the right questions because I'll be honest with you, unlike a sales uh, call, which I'm going to be getting uh, feedback from from my customer. Um, this is there's very little feedback here. I mean, I'm getting a little bit of loves. I'm getting some likes. Not very many people commenting, and I'm hoping that you guys are getting some amazing value here. And if so, say amazing value. This is amazing, okay? Because you know, I I do prepare for these lives just as I do a sales call, and my goal is to make sure that when I offer a solution. It's to say, hey, if I'm able to do this, which is solve your problem, okay, would you do this? Or would it be fair enough to say that this is something that you would give a try? You see, they would say yes, but that's not asking for the sale. The sale comes that after I answer all those questions or I show them that I have the solutions to their problems, that now I say, where and when can we get you started? Do you understand? So that is asking for the sale. Asking for the sale is saying, you know, are you ready to get started today? Okay. Can we get you started right away? You know, would you like, you know, to get um, this, the ball rolling right now? You see, ask for the sale. Do not be hesitant. Do not be afraid. If that is, I mean, you know, you you thought, you know, you thought at the beginning of this video, I was ramp, like that was going to be the focus of it. And that was going to be on the end. But honestly, asking for the sale is got to be as smooth as your rapport building. You need to be able to get to know your client and your customer as smoothly as it is asking for that sale. So what I want you to know is ask for the sale. And last but not least. Last but not least, guys, if you are not doing this, you are failing in your business. Um, not only does it take work to become an amazing closer on, you know, from, from the moment that you get on a phone or a live or a, uh, anything with anybody, um, you got to do this. And I, want, I hope you guys have been taking notes. I pray to God you guys have been taking notes. And I'll do a quick review towards the end here. But listen here, guys. You need to follow up with everyone. So here's the deal. You put a post out on Facebook. You got a bunch of people interested. You've sent out um, all your, your links for people to take a look at, and you never followed up whether or not they watched the videos or whether or not they went to the links. You're shooting yourself in the foot. Sometimes things happen. People are interested in things, and they don't get around to it. You not being in, you not following up via email, via uh, instant messenger, via text is hurting your business and is hurting your ability to close deals. So increase your conversions by making sure that you follow up with everyone. So now let's recap because I want you guys to understand what we went over and I want you to be able to say, this guy is amazing. Look what he went over for free and he's been able to really guide and help us. So take a look. Believe in yourself. Without that, don't even start. You might as well quit. 
Two, love your product and service. Again, you got to love what you're doing and love helping people. That's number three. Love people and love helping them. Four, be an excellent listener. Five, hit key pain points and being consistent. Six, offer a solution. Seven, ask for the sale. And eight, follow up with everyone. I hope you guys understood this and I hope you guys um, were able to really learn today because if you apply the things that I just told you today, you're going to become an amazing closer. If you need help with your follow-up game, meaning email, meaning email, meaning email, please contact me because most of you guys are not sending out emails to your subscribers. And that means you're wasting time and you're leaving food on the table. So with that being said, I hope you guys had an amazing day. I hope you guys really, really dig deep and you grow your businesses as big as you can because I want you to invest your time and energy in gaining skills and knowledge on how to be the best you can. So I'll talk to you guys later. You guys are awesome. Till tomorrow, live at five with less. Tell the world. Peace.